Welcome back. We have a new series and it is called Super Fan. And you guys, I'm a fan of you. I'm so glad that you've showed up today to learn something new in Kidville. We want to cheer each other on. So speaking of cheering, maybe it's tonight for you. Maybe it was a little while ago, but uh, I do know anyone that is excited to watch the Super Bowl. It is happening uh, soon. And I do know someone who is quite pumped. Uh, my husband's team did lose a couple weeks ago in the conference championship game, but there was a lot of cheering that I heard like, oh yeah, yes. And so I know what it's like to see a true fan cheering their team on. And you know what's great? The Super Bowl is happening. I heard that all these players have, they test. Did you know that they test for COVID like twice a day? They're all COVID free so we can cheer them on. They're going to play football. They're going to do this game. And there's gonna be like 22,000 fans in the stands. Now that's actually only a third of the stadium. So of course they're gonna have their masks on, they're gonna be distanced, but these fans are gonna show up and they are gonna be cheering at the top of their lungs and they're gonna be giving it their all. Uh, this stadium has invited a bunch of like um, healthcare workers to enjoy, which was very kind of them to do. But uh, I think if we watch it on TV, we're gonna see some hardcore cheering. People are gonna be super into it and you've probably seen that. It's maybe been a while since you've cheered on uh, like at an actual game or cheered in the stadium, but you probably remember what it's like if you did. I don't know what your team is or your sport is, but hopefully you know what it's like to cheer the team on. And you guys, if you wanna know a little bit more about cheering, I found a really cool video, the science behind cheering, how to cheer your very loudest. So you can check out that link on our page to that Mark Rubber video about cheering. So it's super interesting. If you want to cheer the loudest, you got to do it at the top of your lungs or better yet, you got to bring an air horn. Okay. So you can find out more about that, but I am pumped up because this month we are talking about kindness. That's our life app for this month. And what is kindness? It is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. So that's why you want to cheer others on. And when you cheer for your team, you're like, yeah, you're awesome. Go team, right? You want to show that they're valuable, that you're here for them. You care about them and that you're just going to be behind them, cheering them on. So like we always say here in Kidville, we should treat others the way we want to be treated, right? And who doesn't love to feel valued and appreciated by your fans or your friends? And that is so important. We want to be like super fans of each other. All right. So that's what we're going to do this month. Now, of course, at the game, there's going to be cheerleaders. And I know some of you have experience with cheerleading and cheerleading is one of our sports at sports camp. So I pulled up some old pictures of our old cheerleaders from sports camp. So much fun. I loved hearing them cheer on the players and saying these cool chants and doing their dance moves to build up these players and get them pumped for their sport. And so I thought I've been talking to Miss Kim, one of our cheerleading coaches, and I'm going to try to get some of the old cheers for you because we want to know what those are. Well, let's start off our series with a Bible story that's going to talk about why we should even be kind. We're going to dive into this kindness life app. Let's go and I'll see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Sally Jessup and May Lynn lived in the same town and went to the same school. And both girls had YouTube shows about slime that racked up views from across the world. Get slimed with May! 
Valley's slime creations. The two girls were polite to each other in the hall at school. Hey there. Hi. But they weren't exactly friends either. I'm doing glow in the dark slime next week, so you should do something different. Look, I give my viewers what they want. Which is basically the same thing over and over. Rainbow sand slime, rainbow unicorn slime, rainbow crunchy slime. You're just jealous how many views my rainbow glitter slime got. Whatever. Plus, you use borax in your slime. It's not safe. Is too. Liquid starch is way better. The two girls glared at each other and marched off. A few days later, May watched Sally's newest episode. Sally's Slime Creations. She really should get better theme music. Here's a super important PSA before we get started. You've probably seen some slime recipes that use borax, but borax isn't safe or healthy. Hey, that is not true. I know there's another YouTube show telling you to use borax for the best slime, but in my opinion, you should just unsubscribe to that channel. What? And now it's time for some rainbow fluffy slime. You have got to be kidding. Sally just told thousands of people to stop watching my show. Well, I am unsubbing her right now. May couldn't stop thinking about what Sally had done. I cannot believe her. In the cafeteria at school the next day, Sally walked over to where May was sitting with some other friends at the lunch table. Can I sit here? No way, she can't sit here. When Sally spilled her backpack at the lockers. Oh no. May pretended not to notice and marched right on past. That evening, when May recorded her next episode, she had an announcement of her own. Today on Get Slime with May, I've got an amazing guest to tell us all about the science of slime. But first, I need to warn you about another slime channel. Someone's telling you not to use borax. Well, you should hit unsubscribe fast cause she's a liar. Borax is completely safe and makes the best slime. Now it's time to welcome our guest, Wendy Newton. She's a chemistry expert. May switched to a split screen with her guest, a middle-aged woman with wild curly hair and sleepy eyes. Hi, Wendy, welcome to the show. I'm honored to be here. I gotta ask, you think borax is the best thing to use for slime, right? Borax is great if it's used correctly. I think God has given each of us the smarts to look up safety guidelines and be wise about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's get down to it. You're a chemist. How cool is that? You could say we're all chemists. I mean, just baking brownies is chemistry. That's right. What kind of chemistry are you whipping up for your dinner? Oh, well, it's actually uh, 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 3 a.m. here. Wait, what? I'm in Dubai right now. But that's like halfway around the world, so it's night. I. Oh, I am so sorry, I woke you up. It's all right. You said that in your email. I forgot. It's okay, really. You're being so nice about it. Hey, kind is cool. There's this verse in the Bible from the book of Ephesians. It's kind of my motto. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. May frown. She had to admit she wasn't always great at being kind when someone made her angry. Look, I've messed up so many times and God has wiped the slate clean every single time. That makes it a lot easier to forgive when other people make mistakes. Like calling in the middle of the night? Hey, aren't we a little off topic from slime? Um, I think I'm gonna have to restart this recording. I said some stuff about someone else I need to delete and how about I call you back in the morning? I mean, my morning, your afternoon. Hmm, hmm, that sounds fantastic. May leaned back in her chair and released a long breath. I haven't been very kind at all, even a little. Grabbing her phone, May started a DM to Sally. Hey. I'm sorry about the lunch table thing. I think rainbow slime is pretty cool. Maybe we should do a show together sometime. 
May wasn't sure how Sally would respond, but she did feel better knowing that she'd taken the steps toward being kind instead of focusing on payback. So you know what holiday is coming up? Next week is Valentine's Day, right? And in case you haven't noticed, there is some pretty good Valentine's Day candy out there. And some people really love these, these conversation hearts, right? Even if you don't love the taste of them, they're kind of like rockets or sweet tarts, but uh, they're really fun to like say things to your friends or like look at the funny sayings. Like this one says just um, soulmate, right? If you want to give that to someone or 100% that would, that would be very encouraging. Um, hashtag, right? You could give someone that. Um, this one says thirsty. So maybe you need a drink of water after you eat this. DM me, right? You want your friend to send you a message. So there's all kinds of different ones. And I thought it'd be fun to talk about today's scripture, today's Bible, about um, some, some hearts. Hey, we're going to tell it with these conversation hearts. So as you know, this month we're talking about kindness which is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. So we know it's important to be kind, right? We've, we've felt that when people are kind to us, that really encourages us, it feels good. And we also know how awful it feels when someone doesn't treat us with kindness, right? When they're the opposite of that. Now, did you know that it's especially important for those of us who follow God to be kind? Because when we're kind to others, we're sharing God's love with other people. When we choose to be kind, we are like, showing them actually what God is like. So we should be kind, right? Well, kindness might sound easy on the surface, but let's be honest, sometimes it's hard to be kind. Mean. Maybe someone at school is going around saying mean things to or about everyone. Let's fight. Yikes. Sometimes it's tough to get along with others especially when it's someone that you see all the time, right? Like maybe your brother or sister. Well, sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you just, it's straight, someone's straight up unkind to you. They're doing something that hurts you. And when that happens, do you feel like being kind to them? No, you probably just want to get back at them, right? So how do we do it? How do we show kindness to other people, especially when they're not kind to us, especially when it's hard? Well, we can start out by remembering that God was kind to us first. In fact, that's what Paul said in that verse that we heard in the story, Ephesians 4.32, be kind and tender to one another, forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. And what has Jesus done? Forgive. He died on the cross because he wanted to forgive us. He's forgiven us for every wrong thing that we have ever done. And he wants us to know that he has just forgotten all of those things. No matter how we mess up, God still loves us and he will always forgive us. Now, why did God send Jesus in the first place? Love. Right? Because God loves us. We can be kind because God loves us first. What does that mean? We can actually make that choice because God chose to love us, to forgive us, no matter what we had done, right? And so we can show kindness too. I forgive you. We can show up by forgiving others, right? We all mess up. We know that God forgave us anyways. And so we can do the same for other people, even when they make mistakes. It's okay, right? We can, we can kind of give people a break. We can be kind to our brother or sister, even when they've been driving us crazy or they've hurt our feelings or they've broken something that belongs to us. We can be kind instead of trying to get even, give them a fist bump, right? Well, it's important to remember that you can show kindness no matter what happens, because when we think about what God has done, that really humbles me because I know that he's kind to me even when I mess up, when I'm not nice, and I can choose to be kind to others. And you know what? It's important to know that you don't have to be kind when people are just hurting you or when they're doing things to you that they shouldn't be doing. If there's ever a situation where you don't know what to do, whether it's about you or someone else, you can ask for help. So we're not talking about 
being kind in spite of people treating you badly. But when you're in a situation with a friend or someone you know, you're having a disagreement, someone's really frustrated you, you can still make that first move to go to them and to choose to be kind. You can remember how kind God has been to you in loving you and being there for you. And you can treat, choose to treat that person with kindness. If you do, you're showing them how important and valuable they are. So when it's hard to be kind, remember how God has been kind to you. Remember how much he loves you. When you're having a hard time with someone, then make the first move. Be that person to reach out and to be kind. You could be unkind, but choose to be kind. When your brother refuses to share a piece of gum with him, just be nice and give him an extra one. Or when your friends had a bad day and they take it out on you, do something kind to cheer them up. Be kind to others because God is kind to you. That's where we can always go back to if we need a reason to be kind. Can you guys say this with me? We want to remember this bottom line. It goes, be kind to others because God is kind to you. Our memory verse for this month is a really good one. It's something the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 3.12. So this is our theme kindness verse for the month. It says, you are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud, be gentle and patient. So this is a longer verse. It's a challenging one for you to memorize, but I know you can do it. You got lots of time. Last month's verse was easy, so we're gonna take it up a notch. But let's think about that first. That's pretty cool. Paul says you can actually, like, just like you put on your clothes every morning, you can put on kindness. You can make that choice to act that way and to be that person regardless of what other people are doing. So we can do that if we remember how kind God is to us, right? He's kind to everyone, he loves everyone. We can reach out, we can think about all those ways that God has been kind to us. Maybe that means spending some more time reading your Bible or uh, trying to find things to be grateful for or praying and asking him to, to help you with your attitude. But we can find ways to, to see God's kindness. That's our choice to see it. And you can start by talking to God and asking him for help. So how about we do that right now? Let's ask God for help to be kind this week. Dear God, thank you for being so kind to us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to forgive us forever, to pay for our sins and what you did on the cross. And we know that you love us so much and you love everyone. And God, you want us to be kind to those around us. And that's not based on what they do, but that's because you've been kind first. So I pray that you would help us to remember that we can be kind because you have been kind to us. Thank you so much, Jesus. Help us this week. In your name we pray. Amen. So I can't wait to hear about all the ways that you are kind to others this week. Give it a try. Cheer someone on. And um, I hope that you enjoy the game snacks. I mean, watching the game later, right? We're all going to do that uh, if you're doing that. So are we ready to learn a new song about kindness? This is one of my favorite parts. We can kind of cheer God on by learning a new song and praising him. So let's try it. Give a little girl. 
one another, love one another, yeah, love one another, that's what we'll do.